Okay, team, let's do it. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Untangled Knitting Podcast. My name is Lily and this is a video podcast where I talk about my knitting projects and it's been a bit so I'm still here. I just started a new job which is why it's been a little while and I know that I got a few messages if people were kind of checking in with me. Um, I am still here, I am still active, I'm still very happily making things, but it has been a lot harder to fit in sharing my makes and finding out um, a good schedule to do that both on Instagram and here on YouTube. So I'm working to get more back in the rhythm of that, but I am thinking just for folks who are returning that the expectation should be probably not every two or three weeks, but once a month. So sometime in the month is my goal right now. Um, it actually does take a little bit longer than you might think to put these together, particularly for me because I'm pretty okay with software on computers, but I'm not great at hardware. So you'll see I'm still wearing my little earbuds. I feel like the sound is just better. I do have a mic that I bought, but it just, ah, for whatever reason, I just can't figure out the right coordination and combination of cords to make it work. And so I'm back to earbuds. I am, oh, I think the rest of the setup is okay. Today is a beautiful sunny day here in Oakland, California, and I'm just so excited to share things with you. If this is your first time joining me, welcome, welcome, welcome. And there are a few episodes uh, before this that might be fun to explore. I did make a little playlist called Untangled from the Beginning, and so each of the full episodes will be in order there because I really like doing that for myself whenever I start watching a new knitting podcast. I like to see what's going on currently. That's sometimes how I find a maker or a creator, but I also really enjoy looking back and starting at the beginning. So if that's you as well, I did create that playlist and I might just make a little link right here. And you can go and check that out from the beginning. I have a little notebook today because I did want to remember everything and I, I use my phone for filming. So um, welcome, check, I'm still here, check. <laughs> and what am I wearing? Oh, this is my Midori Hiroshi um, pullover. It is detailed extensively in the last episode. So if you want more details, please do watch episode three. It is made out of wandering flock mohair a lot held with us um, on its own up top and then I added a strand of La Vienna May silk mohair as well. It is probably, I, it is my most surprising knit. It surprised me from the moment I cast it on, the moment I cast it off, it continues to surprise me in my wardrobe. I'm wearing it today with a little white blazer on top. This is what I wore as a work outfit the other day to the gallery and I just, I love it. It's perfect kind of weight and you can layer it and it's just been a really, really nice um, project. I'm really glad I'm wearing it. And what else? Oh, I should probably talk a little bit about what I've been doing um, when I haven't been knitting and the reason my schedule is a little bit different is I went from working for myself as a consultant uh, with individual clients to working at an art gallery. So that's been really, really exciting. And I love my coworkers, but I am commuting. So I'm not just at home. And I 
have found my time, then when I am at home, I really do feel like I need to be with my family and kind of enjoying that time together. I have two very small children. They're two and five. They're maybe small in age, but they're very big in personality and I love them very dearly. And my husband has been awesome in picking up the the changes in our schedule. So I'm coming home a little bit later, but I am also in here in the mornings a little bit later as well. So we're just still trying to figure everything out. It's not going to be a perfect system, but I'm I am happy with the way I think it's going right now. So, so far so good. It's also pretty exciting though, cause I am doing a bit of travel with this role. So part of my main focus is working with our artists on museum projects. And we are going to be doing a larger visit to many of our artists who are based in Europe this summer. So I'm going to be going to Germany in a couple weeks and I would love, love, love any recommendations folks have for German yarn stores. I'm so excited. I've just started to do a little bit of research and I would love your recommendations. So I will be in Dusseldorf, Cologne, and a few of the surrounding towns and then I will also be uh, spending five days in Berlin. So anyone has recommendations, I'm very, very excited to explore the world of German yarn stores and German knits. So please do add those in the comments below. And speaking of comments, people really went for it last time. I did do a giveaway and I'm so excited to be able to announce the winner. I realized though, watching a few other knitting podcasts that I didn't necessarily do it quite right. That's fine, it was my first giveaway. I get it, it happens. I'm trying to be, you know, softer with myself. So I did not explain properly that people needed to subscribe and like as well as comment, but I think that that's fine. So what I am going to do though is wait to announce the winner till the end, which I think is the um, normally prescribed cadence for this. And if you would like and subscribe, that would be really wonderful. I would very much appreciate it. So uh, thank you. And now let's get into the knitting. There has been quite a bit. I finished the stunning test knit that I dove into head first. It was a quick knit and I really enjoyed it. This is the My Time sweater by Lily Kate Makes and it is so much fun to knit and I'll tell you it's even more fun to wear. I have worn this to out on two different date nights. I actually wore it the day after I finished it. I blocked it and then I let it I was down in Southern California visiting my family and I let it air dry outside in the sun. It was a little bit windy and I just left it out there as long as I could. It was maybe a little damp to wear, but I, I have to say, I think I rocked it. Looks great with jeans. I could also see this with a really nice, um, neat, like a silk navy, like midi skirt, I'm thinking, like a navy midi skirt would be really nice. Or I also have a, grayish blue. It's very, very dark, like a steel blue sheath dress. And I think this could look really nice layered on top of that uh, for going out as well. So this has been so, so much fun to wear. And as I said, really fun to knit. If you've never done drop stitches before, Lily Kate has a really wonderful, easy to read, easy to understand pattern for creating these super dramatic sleeves and I had I was nervous for sure but the satisfaction of lining everything up and then just kind of tickling them down was really really fun and again they I think they look beautiful on so definitely definitely worth it and the the weight of it is really usable too so I knit mine up in not the called for yarns because that would be too easy 
Instead, I used the Stargazer from Juniper Moon, which is still one, probably one of my favorite yarns I've used, and I really want to knit with it more. And it is llama and silk. So it has a beautiful drape, a beautiful sheen, some long kind of halo fibers that you can see here, but the silk keeps it really, really lightweight. And so I feel like this is definitely, for me, at least in the Bay Area, this is almost a four season yarn. And I'm really excited to see what else um, I could do with it. So there will definitely be more Stargazer in my future. And what else have we got? Sorry, I'm just trying to see if, yeah, great. Um, this is the Lichen and Lace Blue Lagoon. This is their Marsh Mohair. It's a 72-28 silk and mohair blend. So 28% silk, 72% mohair. This is the color Blue Lagoon. And I swatched with this two ways. I both knit helically, so knitting from two different skeins because this is a very variegated yarn. It has, you know, inconsistent hand dyed goodness. Oh, isn't that so amazing? Can you see okay? Ta-da! I'll do it the other way. Ta-da! It's just so pretty. Um, so anyway, this, I, tr I did that just to try to make it really, really um, even. And frankly, when I was holding it with this, I couldn't tell the difference between when I was knitting with just one skein and when I was alternating. So by the sleeves, I did it for most of the body. And then by the time I got to the sleeves, I was just kind of done. And I said, to heck with it. Um, and I don't think anybody can tell. I certainly can't tell. I think that the the vari variation is not cooling. It's just speckled and beautiful, or I guess I shouldn't say speckled. It's molted kind of and, and really, really stunning. So that was great. Um, that's my only finished object. <laughs> um, I had big goals to try to finish my great gingham raglan. In fact, you know what? I'm going to take this off so I can put on my sleeves. I finished the sleeves and I have a good bit done on the body, but it's bottom up. And for some reason it's hard to, I, I really loved doing the sleeves. And as some of you who've seen other episodes will know, I also did the hat. And so <laughs> I think maybe I was just so used to doing small, doing the pattern in small circulars that when it came to doing it on the, oh, sorry, I'm gonna keep doing this so that I can see a little projection of myself there. Um, when it came to doing it on the big rounds, it was not as fun. I fully did not enjoy that, but check this out. I have two of them. They are complete. I think it's gonna be super cute. I'm really, really happy with my color choice. Again, those of you who were part of the color struggle for me will know, and this these may look a bit short, but I don't think they will be both because of the raglan and because I know that based on my measurements from my hat, I got gauge right on. And well, there was some different needle usage from the hat, but based on the way that the hat blocked out, I'm very confident in the measurements that I have for the sleeves. Anyway, the small circulars, this pattern just whipped around. And so I actually, hmm, did I not bring, did I really not? I don't think I brought up the body. Shoot. Okay, so I have like this much. <laughs> it's not a lot. I have like three and a half inches. So it's supposed to be very cropped and I will not do it that cropped. I need to make it at least, I think, five and a half or six inches. So that's what I'm going to be doing. It's 
going to be probably the same length as this bad boy. I'll stand up just to give you a little hint. Just, I like things right at my waist bone, like right here. That seems to hit perfect for me. So that's my goal with the Great Gingham. Actually, this is kind of fun, isn't it? They really do go together. Ah, I know. I watched back the kind of ridiculous addendum to my last to my last podcast about the colors that I use. And actually that that leads me pretty well. Oh, I should probably tell you more about this. Okay. This is a great game of Raglan by Jesse May Designs and it's all over the Instagrams and I jumped on the bandwagon and bought the pattern as soon as it released. I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to be really great to wear. It's sport weight, which as some of you, excuse me, some of you will know is one of my favorite weights of yarn to knit with. I feel like it's just perfect for my um, climate and temperature here in Northern California. And I am using Camellia, Camellia Fiber Co's Sport Weight Yarn in the color Chicory, which is quite beautiful, kind of a steely blue. And I'm using Spin Cycles Dyed in the Wool in the colorway Cold Comfort. And I'm just gonna double check that because I went back and forth between the castle and cold comfort. Yeah, cold comfort. And this has some really, the pinks and the greens are definitely the thing that I think people assume are the dominant colors of this, but there's some gray in here, which I find really exciting, really interesting, and pairs really beautifully with the steel gray. So that's been a fun surprise for this project for sure. And I, I am excited about it. I just kind of feel like the larger repeats, the larger circumference repeats of this pattern, maybe I'm just feeling a little bit done with it. I don't know. I have to get back into it. So there's that. And the next project was a bit of a surprise <laughs> to me. And uh, it might be for you as well. I was looking at this designer brand from Southern California who I've liked for a while, but always saw her sweaters and thought, I think I could make that. And as I was scrolling through Instagram, I think there was an ad for it, or I had seen a friend of mine wear it, or there was some big reference point where I thought, oh yeah, those sweaters are really great. And so it's called Jenny Kane. So I went to the Jenny Kane website and the sweater that really piqued my interest was a cardigan. It was slightly cropped. It wasn't, it's not a chunky knit, but I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's like an air and weight knit most probably. And I haven't seen this in person, but I really liked the look of it. It had kind of bigger shoulders and more fitted sleeves. And I feel like that would be, I was just thinking that would be a really good fit for me and the way I like to wear things. All of the, the whole color palette for the brand is incredibly neutral. And I also thought to myself, looking through the website, wow, it feels a lot like petite knit. All of these sweaters have a real petite knit vibe to them. And I had never knit a petite knit sweater. So I thought, I'm gonna do this. I am going to use these Jenny Kane sweaters as inspiration, particularly for the palette. And then I'm gonna use a petite knit pattern to make this cardigan. So as soon as I kind of had that idea, I instantly thought of a yarn that I've been very, very intrigued by and never had any sort of idea how I'd use it. So I had never bought it. And that is 
Pearl Soho's Simply Camel. So this is natural, undyed, 100% baby camel fibers. It is such an interesting, beautiful yarn. It's so soft. I would say it's softer than cashmere. It, is, it doesn't have much of a halo at all. There's not a lot of fuzz to it. It's just incredibly, incredibly soft. It also is has a really nice sheen and silkiness to the fiber. It doesn't feel fuzzy. It just feels squishy and soft. If you, I had never encountered 100% camel fiber until I ordered this and it's really really magical so i will have a bit left over from this project and i i would love anyone's ideas on how to use it i'm thinking a scarf or a hat or mittens or something just really really close to skin it is it's magical i've it's it surpassed all my expectations so this was something i knew i i wanted to use however it is extremely drapey and from here, I'm just going to get up close while I talk. And from everything I have heard, do you see that twist too? Isn't that unreal? It's like its own little barber pole twist. So beautiful and oh, so nice. So anyway, I knew from reading up about the yarn that it does stretch quite a bit and I knew I wanted this sweater to have a quite a bit of structure. So I knew I wanted to pair a mohair with it and I thought it would be good to do something lighter too, just for my complexion because I, I don't rock a brown very well and <laughs> I had to kind of learn the hard way. Yellow, like, these ochre yellow earth tones, they're just, I, I can wear them, but I don't think that they make my skin look the best. And um, particularly yellowy browns, um, these kind of more, yeah, the, the, the brown can be tough for me to wear. So I'm, I'm quite, jealous of people who who rock that um so i knew i wanted to lighten it up quite a bit so i also so i would wear it more so it would go more with the the clothes in my wardrobe so i went looking and of course turned to knitting for olive with all their incredible soft muted tones this is the soft silk mohair in the color mushroom rose and I have to say, this was a bit of a, I won't say it was like a um, shot in the dark. I had a good idea that this would work, but there were so many options. I felt really good that I got what I wanted on the first try. So that felt really good. So this is where I was thinking. And then I realized just how thin when it's knit up, this camel is, see, I'm gonna stretch a fiber for you from here so you can see. This is two fibers together. Do you see that? It's really, it's really not that thin. If you just take one strand, can you see that? I mean, it's really, it's more like a fingering than anything else. So I wanted that chunky Jenny Kane vibe. And another yarn that I've always thought was super stunning is Gather from my, my true love, a verb for keeping warm. And this is a really special undyed 75% California Rambouillet and 25% Arizona Alpaca. It's 200 yards to 50 grams. So it's a really flexible weight, I would say. It's, this color is called dough. There's quite a few different mixes that are all natural and undyed, 
but are sorted and spun according to their colors. So this is coming out darker than it actually is. Let's see if I can get it. There you go. See how it's variegated as well? All according to the natural fibers in the yarn itself. So I put them all together, baby. And I'm super, super happy with how it came out. This is the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit. And it is a deep raglan. And I am really stepping out on a very standard pattern because I have used a much bigger gauge knit. So this is knitting the size small. And I know from all sorts of Instagram and Ravelry posts that the ease on this garment is incredibly um, varied. So, and incredibly big. You know, there are folks who say 10 inches of positive V is no thank you. So what I decided to do is, because again, I wanted that larger shoulder with a, with a, a roomy shoulder, and a more defined arm. And then I also wanted this beautiful three stitch. Oh, here, sorry, I'm going backwards. The three stitch raglan, can you see that? I think that's quite nice. And so what I decided to do is pretty, uh, I think unorthodox and it might actually just be knitting cheating, but I don't know, are there really rules to this? So what I decided to do is I knit per the instructions or per pattern until I got to the split for sleeves. And after the split for sleeves, you're supposed to increase the body, but not the arms. So what I did instead was just not increase at all because I really liked the way it fit around my body. And what I did instead was instead of not decreasing the arms, what I'm going to do is actually graft the, the mid, or I guess I should, how, how would you describe this? The lower 10 stitches on either side are going to be grafted together. And I did it really quickly and not, I'll probably tear this out and do it better on the other side, but it, I think it looks really great in terms of the way it fits. I'll just put it on so you can see. So what happens then is that, here is that better? Yeah, so what happens is you have the raglan that goes all the way down almost to, well, it goes far below here. Can you see there? That's better. So it goes down here to the raglan and then I just stitched this up. So I get that really wide, beautiful shoulder and this very deep three stitch raglan, but I get the fitted sleeve. So I think it's working for me. I'm really enjoying it. I, I have to say I love the gauge because it's knitting up so quickly and I think the fabric that I created with this little trio is really beautiful. <laughs> and it has the softness and the drape from the camel, but the structure and the variation and movement of color from the gather from Verb for Keeping Warm. And of course, there's these little moments of shine where you can just see the silk core of the mohair right nestled into the fibers of the camel. And it's just really something. I'm, <laughs> I gotta say, I'm really, really pleased. There's a few times where I actually miss the mohair though that I'm just now seeing in the light. And I already bound off the bottom, so that's a bummer. But I'll probably, I'll just darn them down. Yeah, that'll be fine. Eesh, you see that? It's not not fabulous, but that's okay. And yeah, so this was my surprise inspiration moment. And 
I think it will be great for work, frankly. I think it will be a piece I wear all the time. It's got a lot of fluff to it right now. <laughs> um, it's definitely a fluff fest, but yeah, I love it. And it was really, really fun to feel creative and problem solvy and it really started with this piece where I started to do that creative kind of make things differently, make things your own. And now I just love the fact that I feel that sense of empowerment with these patterns. And yeah, I think I have, it's funny, I really don't have any interest in designing knitwear. Sorry, I'm trying to deal with um, bra straps in this. <laughs> um, I don't have any desire to design knitwear, but I feel really good knowing that I can modify a pattern and be creative not only with the colors that I'm picking or the fiber content, but the actual structure of the garment itself. So that just feels, feels like a win. It really does, it feels good. And again, real joy to work with these fibers that had been on my list. And they were new acquisitions for this project, which is not great, you know, not my intention. I really did want to knit from my stash, but what can I say? I was inspired. I just, I just went for it and it was really, really fun. My next whip that is a new to you all whip is from the always amazing knit collage and it is my brioche journey. I am still learning. I have definitely watched the videos a hundred times over. I, I think I made a mistake in one of the raglan increases in this brioche, but I don't think I know enough about brioche to know where it even is. So I may just hop on with one of the amazing, amazing tutors that you get access to through Knit Collage to inquire, but it's really, cute. it's really cute so far. This is actually almost the entire yoke and this is again, this is called the Grow With Me. And it's a cardigan. And I'm debating whether I will do it as a full sleeve. Um, Jackie from Caddy Jack's Knits has one with flared sleeves that's really, really cool. So I might, I might try for that, but I have to get through the body first. So it's, it's real. I, I will say though, I'm really, really happy with my yarn choice. So you, and in fact, I actually think as of today, there are more openings in the knit collage make along. So if you have a moment, like get ye <laughs> to the knit collage site, it's so, so, so much fun. Their knit alongs are no pressure, all about learning. The reason I think you should join a knit collage knit along is so you can learn a new skill or meet new people. It's for both of those things. There's just, it's just such a wonderful way to do it. And so the kits came out and I really knew, I knew I wanted to work with this color. So, so beautiful. It is now escaping me, but I will put the um, all the details for this and all the other projects will be in the description box below. You can always access those and they are, are links wherever I can provide them so you don't have to Google around yourself. Anywho, so the kit for this color though came with this as, so this is the, this is 100% wool and it's spun with Lurex. So it has that line of sparkle metallic thread that is keeping it all together in that loose spin. And then the 100% cotton that they use 
is the contrast color. And so this was the contrast color that came with the kit. And it's moody and beautiful, dusty blues and this great, I love this color red actually. It's really, really something. It looks like a, a the inside of a lily. The, the red inside of a white lily, I think. That and something. Really, really beautiful. So this was the recommended pairing. And I, though, had seen earlier on the site this really pretty pink. It was a dusty pink with a gray blue dot in it. So you can see there's that gray blue going throughout. And I thought to myself, well, I'll order the kit and then I'll just add, you know, if I don't think, and I'll, then I'll order this. And, and if I don't like the way this looks, I'll just use what came with the kit and send it back. And of course I loved this. <laughs> so I couldn't split up the kit. So I couldn't, I didn't want to return that, um, and split up the kit, but all's well that ends well, because I also had left over from my other escapades in knit collage, some pretty amazing coincidental binds. So this is their dreamland yarn and it's in the color, a case of you and look what is spun up in dreamland. Do you see that? Oh yeah, no big deal. It's this wildflower cotton fabric, dusty fleur. So isn't that a coincidence? And then I also happen to have a little bit of this one left over, which is also spun up in this. Okay. So we're getting, we're getting the vibe and <laughs> this fabulous dream dreamland yarn this one's called circle game and if you haven't noticed already all of the dreamland yarns i believe are named after joni mitchell songs which is just ah so great so awesome so the dreamland circle game has spun into it the wildflower and what's this one called Oh dear, they have such great, they all have such a great name. Petal. So now I gotta make a kaleidoscope with all this goodness. I'm so, so pumped. And I will, I think, have some of this left over. Some of the spun cloud will be left over. So I'm guessing that will be like my base, you know? What do you think? I really want a kaleidoscope and I don't know why I keep getting distracted by all the other knit collage things to make when all I really want to make is a kaleidoscope, but I, I want to make use of the tutorials and I want to, I want to be a brioche. I'm not going to say star because I will never be a brioche star, but I want to be <laughs> brioche capable and co brioche confident. I am brioche capable but I want to be brioche confident. And I think y'all know why. It is because I would very, very much like to cast on this satellite shawl from, from Andrea Mowry, which I got a kit for at a bird for keeping warm. I think is going to be incredibly beautiful and I saw that Kenzie, the lovely Kenzie, who, if you don't follow on Instagram, is such a fun follow. I highly, highly recommend. She went on vacation recently and she is not a shawl knitter, but she said she was gonna knit this shawl. And I, not this particular shawl, but a shawl. I think this is a great project for my transatlantic flight. What do you guys think? I would love any other input on traveling yarn and flighting or <laughs> flying <laughs> because my thought is I, I cast on the project 
I knit a, a bit of it here at home. And then I just bring on the plane the one or two skeins I'm going to need or knit from on the plane. And then I can put the rest of the yarn into my check, check luggage. I think that this could work. I'm also thinking of throwing in this skein of glacial melt that I got the other day because I think it would look really, really beautiful in here. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But yes, it's a really long flight from, thank goodness it's direct, but I am going from San Francisco to Frankfurt. So it's a long flight. It's like a 15 hour flight. So I'd like to get some knitting time in. And oh, I'm also a terrible plane sleeper. Even when I have great resources, it's just for some reason I feel really, I think I just feel anxious. So I'm using this app that gives you kind of a plan for how to avoid jet lag and get yourself adjusted to sleeping on a plane. And I don't know, maybe it's a gimmick, but a friend of mine recommended it and it was developed for astronauts. So I was like, sure, sign me up. Art curators fly, so do astronauts. We have so much in common. So anyway, I'm hopeful, I'm really hopeful. And, and I do think that this project would be a great one to bring on a plane or I'm hoping at least it would be a good one to bring on a plane and not be too giant when I'm working on it and then I'll have evenings after after nighttime events uh when I'm over there so that's what I'm knitting right now I have really run out of steam well that's not true I haven't totally run out of steam. I'm almost totally out of steam on Metamorphic. I'm in this, I'm in Sleepland. Just, I just need to knock it out. It's, it's so pretty. I genuinely do really, really like it. Sorry, it's inside out right now um, because I was mid, mid knit, but even right side in, it looks great. I do, I do really enjoy it. Here, I'll flip it around. I just need to knock these sleeves out and not be a sleeve island person, which I didn't think I was. But then I got so excited about having a birthday sweater and then I got so excited about this um, petite knit sweater, which I am really, I, I think it's the thing I wanna be working on, which is kind of interesting, right? We should We should probably pay attention to the things that are resonating the most and and kind of one I I, I want to be curious about that I do because what are the things I like about it well one of them which is the same thing I liked about this piece is that there's I really like drapey projects it turns out I like a drapey knit and I really like, while this is definitely because of the silk content, much more drapey and, and less structured than this guy. Oh, it still feels so good. <laughs> um, what do I love about it? I love the marling effect. And I get now why people just throw a mohair in all the time. Oof, I have a few places where I purled. My pearls are kind of popping out. Purling out, do you guys know that phrase? It means that when you're knitting back and forth, your pearl rows are, you, are can be somewhat looser than your knit rows. And so it creates these little moments where they kind of pop out. It's not super noticeable. Oh, there's one. See it? Ugh, not great. But I've done, I did it before on another cardigan that I worked up and uh, the Sarah cardigan from Coco Knits. And I gotta say, I just, um, I had just blocked out. It blocked out just completely fine and it was no big deal. So I'm just gonna try not to worry about it. 
anyway, paying attention to the things that we love, I think what I love is that marling. So the stripes should give me that same repetitive feel. I just gotta get, get it done. I think I should get it done by the end of the month so I can post it in their knit along because I think you might know Andrea Mowry is doing her March to May knit along. So I have till the end of May. How many days is that? Today's the 20th. All right. I got 10 days. I can do two sleeves in 10 days. All right. This is my commitment. <laughs> I am going to knock this out, knock out these two sleeves, knock out these two sleeves. I'm not going to worry about the, I don't think I'm going to worry about my girl with me because frankly it's really fast uh, working with such big yarn and I really want to sit and finish it consistently so I'm going to put that on hold until I get back from my trip but before I leave I'm going to finish both these sleeves and I'm going to cast on the shawl those are my goals that's all I have to do I can do it I can totally do it I can especially and I'm not going to worry about going around and around on that great gingham I think again, I just need to sit down and focus on getting these two things done, right? Okay, thank you. My community of accountability, of internet, friends and strangers. Okay, and I still have my poor Stria is still in this giant basket with all the stripes. I did do a couple rows though, and thank you all for your encouragement. It is really great. Isn't it great? It's a great sweater. It's going to be awesome. And I, as soon as I split for sleeves, which is in just a few more rows, it's like 10 more rows. It's going to be awesome. I'm not going to worry about those little, those little errors. If you're across the room, someone told me that was the trick. If you're across the room and you can't tell, then it's no big deal. So I'm just going to say it's no big deal. Anywho's okay. Those are all the in process, too many things and the thing I'm gonna cast on. Acquisitions, you saw the beautiful camel hair sweater axe and the knit collage acquisitions. And then I did have a birthday. So I was the very lucky recipient of another Heidi West Big Projects bag because, you know, I love, I, I love them so much and they hold everything all together and they open up so wide and so this is where my Grow With Me is living as it grows and it's growing very beautifully and I love this print as well and she just came out actually with a few more springtime prints. I cannot rec recommend her shop more. Just fantastic, super durable. And you don't have to worry. I know some people don't enjoy project bags with zippers on them, but I don't think you have to worry in this case because this opens so wide. What that means is when it closes, it closes up and away from the yarn. It goes up like a little envelope fold. So when it's down, your yarn can be seen like this, but when it closes, it goes up and away from the yarn. Anyway, I just had heard that some people didn't like zippers, but I don't think that's an issue there. And that was gifted to me by my lovely mama, who put inside of it something pretty extraordinary. And it is a kit from the Bauhaus Strickling Museum from Sweden. And if you aren't familiar, this is the most amazing, <laughs> um, amazing knitting legacy. And it's Angora fibers raised humanely and kindly and I will say beautifully by this incredibly passionate here she is why is this stuck 
oh, sorry. There we go. Incredibly passionate maker. Here she is. Isn't that those beautiful images? I just love it. And the designs for the sweaters are from, many of them are from a, there we go. Oh, isn't that incredible? Sorry, I'm distracted by, <laughs> by the images on the screen. So basically the story, and you should definitely go check out the full history, which is detailed in the Fruity Knitting podcast. And I'll put a link below because it's a really, really amazing story that I will probably not do justice to. But the story, as I understand it, is that there's this incredible making tradition of mosaic color work that comes out of Sweden that was done with specialized fibers, including Angora in the early, in the, in the early part of the 20th century. Many of those patterns were passed down orally and were not written down or were done in, in one particular, for one particular company, the Battle Street Green Company. And then a family got involved to try to resurrect those patterns, re-dye the colors and create kits based on these historic patterns. And so the one that my dear mama got for me is no surprise perhaps, the blue one. And of course I won't show you the chart, but it is a little intimidating. But what I love about it is, let me find a way to, Try to share this without sharing the chart. Oh, there we go. I think this will work. So what you can see though, what's so cool is they attach all of the yarn samples onto, onto the chart page itself, just to help you read each color, which I really, really love. And then it's just a series of knits and pearls, just like a, just like a shifty. Except, except at the end, let me see if I can find the, the image of the, the sweater that I, that I am charged with making. I don't know if it's in here. I think it's close. Sorry. I, I don't know if you could hear that, but my, my headphones are start here. It is. My headphones are starting to go. You can see it here. That is it. That is what I shall be attempting. And I think, I gotta say guys, I think it's gonna be a fall time practice, but let me show you the yarn. It is Merino and Angora. And this is really about, I believe, from what I understand, this is about making a heirloom. And so you have, it's very thin. It is lace weight and knit on size zero needles. This is the perfect cornflower blue, which I love. So this is the main color. And then here are the wee skeins, look at this one, it's so tiny. <laughs> the wee skeins of contrasting colors that you add in. And I will say that the one I have, I don't believe you use more than two colors at a time. So I should, I, I feel like, oop, I dropped one. Dropped my little guy, there we go. So I should be okay but it's definitely going to be a challenge. And we'll get some more of that green so you can see it. Isn't that so sweet? Yeah. So thank you again, dear mama. I'm really, really excited about my projects and are there any other acquisitions? Oh, yes. Look at these cute little labels I got. I forgot to share these the other day. It says circa 2022. And I have been having a hard time with this sweater, recognizing the front from the back, even though 
they are very, very different structurally because I have decreases along the waist shaping in the back of this garment. And I also have the back coming up quite farther and, you know, the short rows and all of that goodness. When it's just folded up though, it's really hard to tell. It's just this fluff pile. So I wanted to get some labels and there were lots of different, you know, made by me and other types of handmade labels, but I really liked the idea of dating them. Am I too much of a historian? I, I think so. I think this is where you're like, <laughs> um, but I do, I really like that circa 2022. So I will be putting this on everything I've made these this year, which I'm really, really stoked about. And yeah, I love it. I'll put the links to these below too. If you want to scope them out. And now let's do the giveaway. I did a, used a random comment picker that I found online and Trish. Trish, you are the winner. And I am so glad that this is the winner because I remember reading Trish's comment. Thank you all to everyone, everyone who commented. I think we had over 300 comments on the post, which I really thought was so much fun. And it was fun to see people answering each other and really having some engagement. So please feel free to do that down below as well. And I, I wrote out Trish's comment because I thought it was so perfect. Trish says, hi, Lily. Thank you for the invitation to your giveaway. My bud this spring is having more time for knitting projects as my husband has declared that he will be managing the garden this year. LOL. <laughs> I'm committed to sitting on the deck with a cider and a whip watching his progress. And Trish signed it, Trish from beautiful BC. And I just thought this was the perfect comment for a number of reasons. First off, so many gardeners, y'all are growing everything. And I loved hearing about all of the different gardening projects that are your buds. So many buds too, of people spending time with family and spending time with kiddos and grandkiddos. And I just loved hearing everything that folks are looking forward to. I, I really, it really just made me smile. And a few folks said that they wanted to adopt that tradition of asking people what their rose, their bud and their thorns are as a way of engaging and as also a way of connecting with each other. So thank you all for sharing with me what you're looking forward to and keep looking for those buds. Trish, you will be receiving this beautiful handcrafted yarn bucket bag from Heidi West and Heidi West Designs, as well as a skein of Wandering Flock in Neon Sherbert fingering. This is their hundred, uh, this is their single, which is really, really something. And it's paired with the Neon Sherbert Mohair, this is 80% mohair, and I think, and that's what this is made out of too. It is so fun to knit with and really lightweight, really great for summer. Don't be afraid of knitting with this kind of fiber this summer. And there's also the Wandering Flock pairing of Aurora. And this little Robin's egg, or sorry, duck egg, duck egg from Ching Fibers. So here is your springtime basket, Trish from beautiful British Columbia. I can't wait to see what you make. And to everybody else, thank you again for liking and commenting and subscribing. Thank you for supporting my knitting journey, supporting each other's knitting journeys. And I can't wait to see where everybody goes. Please, please, Please tell me where to go in Germany to look at yarn and squish yarn. And if you also have recommendations for, you know, restaurants and things to do, I will be really booked for the first 10 days when I'm in Dusseldorf and Cologne, but then in Berlin, I will have more free time. So if folks have, you know, top 10 lists for Berlin, please do send them my way. And 
thank you all. I really appreciate this community and I'm really happy to be here sharing knitting with you. So I'll close the same way I always do, even though it's a little cheesy. I think we can all be reminded that the world's a better place when you show up just as you are and keep inserting yourself into the world one stitch at a time, one smile, one text, one phone call, one hi, how are you doing at a time. And I just appreciate you being you. Have a wonderful rest of your day and happy knitting. Bye.